Now, case studies, we actually talked about this case study on the on the first day when it came to uh, Nippon Steel. This is a very large steel plant, like we said, around 10,000 hydraulic systems. And what they were noticing was contamination was one of the leading causes of failure at their plant. So what can we do? What can we control to take that out of the, uh, out of the realm of possibility? So you can see the action plan that they put in place. First things first, they set cleanliness targets. They say, all right, we know that we need cleaner fluid, but instead of just saying, I need cleaner fluid, they set an actual target around it. And we'll, we'll talk about particle counts and how people set targets as well. And they installed sampling ports. So not only do you have to set a target, but you need a way to measure this. You need to, to take actions to achieve those targets. So sampling ports allow us to measure it, to achieve it. We have improved filters and breathers to keep the contaminants out. And then they also got an on-site particle counter to where now they can turn the data over very, very quickly. So they take a sample nearly, um, you know, a few minutes later, they can take it to the lab, run it through a particle counter and see what they're doing. And as they started to implement this program, you can actually see that they had a huge drop in the number of pumps that they started replacing. So, I mean, it does lag a little bit, but a huge drop. And it says, you know, some of the achievements that they have, 75% reduction in oil consumption, 80% reduction in hydraulic repairs, 50% reduction in bearing purchases. These are huge savings. This is a giant bottom line effect that they're seeing. Now, it is important to note, as they are implementing the program, these results don't come overnight. It does actually lag. So here you can actually see how they're implementing the program and their number of pumps going bad continues to rise. So you do have to maintain diligence. You do have to maintain your effort because it's not going to be overnight. It is going to be a, a long-term goal. It is the, the long game that we're playing here. So <clears throat> these pumps that we're seeing, this lag, these were the ones that were already failing. These were the ones that were already in some sort of failure mode. So simply giving them cleaner oil isn't going to stop them from failing. It may extend that out a little bit, but eventually once we, we start replacing those with new pumps and we're taking care of those new pumps in a better way, a huge drop off. So it has been done before. This is in the steel industry. Like I said, it was just an incredibly dirty industry. So if they can do it, like I tell most people, anyone can do it. It just requires dedication. It requires diligence. It requires people being, you know, almost hard headed in the way that they do things to, to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Uh, one of their direct competitors here, Kawasaki, uh, Kawasaki Steel. You can notice that the action plan seems awful familiar. Setting cleanliness targets, stalling offline filters, so better filtration, but an on-site particle counter. So with Nippon Steel, you know, they were they won several awards around lubrication. They spoke at several conferences. They they were interviewed. They produced a, a lot of papers. Um, basically, they, they shared the roadmap. They shared the game plan, the playbook of what it took to, to do their work. So with Kawasaki Steel, you see same sort of action plan and a very drastic drop in a short amount of time. They, they kind of went to school on them. They learned from them. So our baseline, you know, year one, this is where we were in terms of breakdowns, in terms of uh, fluid consumption. After the first year, you see a marked drop in both breakdowns and fluid consumption. Then it goes on. And you think about this, it goes hand in hand, right? Because when a machine breaks down and you have to, to repair it, do some sort of uh, component swap, one of the first things that you typically do is you drain the oil. So... If we aren't having as many machines fail, <clears throat> we're not draining the oil as often, so we're not disposing of that oil. Uh, we're keeping it inside the, the machine. So not only are we saving the downtime associated with the failure, but we're also saving the oil that it's going to take to, to refill this machine to, to go do something. So it goes hand in hand. Um, the National Research Council of Canada they did a study across different industries in Canada. And they're saying, all right, why are these machines going bad? So they start doing root cause analysis on failed parts and they're quantifying or classifying the failed parts 
in two different failure modes. So you see abrasion, erosion, fatigue, adhesion, fretting, others. So they're basically saying, all right, as we start to, to look at this bearing or as we start to, to look at this other pump or whatever the, the case may be, what was the underlying failure mechanism that started this to uh, fail? And as they start classifying them, one thing becomes incredibly clear. The vast majority of wear or the vast majority of machine failure, it says upwards here of 82% are associated with some sort of solid particle. Getting something like dirt inside the, the lubricant. 82% of failures associated with particle contamination. Now, yes, 18% non-particle induced. That could be um, either the wrong lubricant or it could be something like uh, water was in there or anything like that. But 82% across all of Canada, across these different industries, an enormous amount of contaminants cause an enormous amount of wear. And some industries are even worse than others. If, if you look up here at mining, if you wanted to, to do the math in the mining industry, you can see how many failures they had associated with particles compared to how few they had to non-particles. So depending on the industry that you operate in and the environment that you operate in, it's going to go hand in hand with what you'd expect to find. So areas that have a lot of airborne dust, areas that have um, maybe a milling area where it's going to be kicking up a lot of solid particles or maybe machines that operate outside where it's next to a dirt road or something where we're kicking up all this debris and it finds its way in. And some of this goes with your lubrication practices as well. Because while a lot of machines may be inside, away from, from atmospheric dust, there's, there's dust floating in the air everywhere. And new oil isn't clean. So you were actually bringing in some solid contaminants with the, the brand new oil. So we have to be diligent. We have to make sure that, that every step of our chain of custody with that lubricant is done as in a clean manner as possible. So when it comes to, to particle contamination, particle contamination is both the cause and the effect of wear. It does two things, right? We get a, a solid particle in between a, a moving spot. So let's say that we have got a, a rolling element bearing here and this element's coming down We've got the, the race that it's riding on. And remember, it's the particles that are roughly the same size as the lubricating film that cause the most damage. So the particle gets embedded right in between here. And as the element rotates around here, it starts to cut, starts to scratch, starts to produce wear debris from that single contaminant. Now, like we said, it's both the cause and the effect of wear. So the particle, the, the dirt, got in there and caused wear. And the wear particle now, that metal shaving, it is yet another particle that could be embedded in the surface that can get cut, uh, caught in there and lead to more cutting, more scratching, more gouging. So particles generate more particles generate more particles, and they're coming from the machine surface. They're, they're coming from different things inside that machine, and they generate more and more things. It's not just a simple, you know, dirt gets in there and it cuts one time. No, it cuts multiple times. Every time it sees the machine part, it cuts, it cuts, it cuts. So really, there's, there's uh, one way to look at this. So being proactive, we're focusing on controlling the rate of failure-inducing particle uh, occurrences. So if we are focusing on reducing the number of particles inside the oil, the cleanliness of the oil, making sure it's as clean as possible, that is proactive, and now we are controlling the failure rate. 